Tumble Track is having a 10% off sale on Tumble Track tune up things. So, all the stuff to make your Tumble Track last and work like the day it was born. Oh, I love a Tumble Track. Check out the sale on their sales tab on the website. That's uh, by visiting Tumble Track at T U M B L T R A K. Tumble Track Train Smart. Remember, the show is PG 13, so you might hear a naughty word or two. Proclamation that we're going to test out is this idea that athletes from the Eastern Bloc would have won all of the golds and basically almost every medal at the 1984 Olympics had they attended. <laughs> Today, would the boycotting countries have won all the medals at the 1984 Olympics? It's Olamode's Friendship Games versus the 1984 LA Olympics. Gymnastics mm -hmm. fight 1984. Let's go. Mm -hmm. This is episode uh, 22, the 22nd episode for 2023. It's uh, June 12th today. Welcome to the number one gymnastics podcast in the galaxy. I'm Jessica O'Byrne, and I'm here with Spencer Barnes from the balance beam situation. And next week, we're going to cover the Asian Games, find out who qualified to Worlds. Asian from there. Champions. Championships. Yeah, it's not the games, it's the championships. That's where you qualify to stuff from there. Um, and we're going to get to all the gym internet news and a reminder that behind the scenes for Club Gym Nerd members, um, your live QA is at 11 a.m. Pacific this Thursday, not Friday, because Spencer decided to have a life this week. So he's allowed, you guys. So it's summer, summer things. All right. <laughs> Let's. Visit Czechoslovakia. Yes. In 1984. Give mm. me the oh what are what's our assumption that we are starting with, Spencer? Yes. The the thesis, the open our opening proclamation that we're gonna test out is this idea that athletes from the Eastern Bloc would have won all of the golds and basically almost every medal at the 1984 Olympics had they attended. And that the 1984 Olympic medals, while amazing accomplishments, do not mean you were the best in the world in 1984. So today we're going to dive in. We're going to put that bias, that, that prior to the test, and see if it holds up to the reality of actually watching these routines back to back and comparing them with the benefit of, you know, 40 years of hindsight. <laughs> And I just want to add, like, why this matters today. Like, why do we still care about this stuff? And I think it's one because I was we're gym nerds. <laughs> you want to be an informed gym nerd. If you haven't watched this meet, what are you doing with I mean, your life? Yeah. Um, also, because, like, these badass women were doing combinations and skills that are still being used today. Yes, like, Souk Foles still make a world final in 2022. Um, or they're doing skills like Masta Panova doing her back handspring Anodi and perfect series on beam before it was named after Anodi. Um, they're so, these skills and combinations are so hard that they're still being used or rarely used today because that's how badass they are. And also because the current code and the valiant efforts, shout out to the Women's Technical Committee head, Donna Telesachi, because she is desperately trying to revert back to this level of artistry, and we salute you, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> because we would also like meets to, to all look like the Soviet gymnasts back in the day. So, yeah. yes. If there's anything, also if there's anything we've learned from talking about whether Mary Lou Retton or Katarina Zabo should actually have won the Olympic all-around gold in 1984, it's that these 40 years of time passing have done nothing to dull the takes. To dull the passion of the takes. <laughs> they are as paragraph-ridden as they were the day they were born. They are as long as they are misspelled. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so setting the scene. Yeah. AKA, what if Jessica and Spencer were your substitute history teachers for a day, which I think would be an awesome class if I do say something. It would so be myself. the most fun. Invite us, you guys. We'll we do would it. get nothing done and it would be amazing. <laughs> we would be the most easily distracted substitute teachers ever. You know, like when you had a substitute teacher and you would try to like get off topic as quickly as possible, like we're, we are going to ensure we get nothing done today. We would be the biggest wimps. <laughs> Someone would just have to be like, um, Miss O'Byrne, what about, um, like, racial justice in the 60s? And you would be like, the class is dismissed. We're done. Thank you for I, asking. I, 
Thank you for asking. <laughs> Do you have a nine hours? Because we're staying for nine hours. Okay, so here's what was happening. Y'all, it's 1984. Shoulder pads. Shoulder pads. Colored eyeliner. Colored eyeliner. Everyone's watching. Everyone's watching the Cosby show and listening to Michael Jackson and being like, Every- this is fine. This will age perfectly. This will always be fine. Um, the IOC announces that the 1984 Olympics, that they have selected the host city to be Los Angeles. And by selected, I mean no one else applied. And it was defaulted to Los Angeles. But also the IOC was like, so money, huh? We we like that. And Los Angeles was like, we're going to do, we can do that. And the IOC was like, Los Angeles, I'm yours. So Los Angeles, 1984 Olympics. But then Moscow heard about that and was like, what? Uh, excuse me. They, America, four years ago, boycotted our Olympics in moscow 1980 so how could we possibly be expected to go to their olympics in 1984 which is generally considered to be the reason why the soviet union and their you know associated toady countries also announced uh the announced a boycott for 1984 because the united states led the boycott of many countries boycotting the 1980 Olympics. The Soviet Union couldn't very well, like, RSVP yes to America's sports party after America didn't attend their sports party in 1980. Like, that's just basic middle school rules. Everybody like, there's the old, the old saying that, like, all politics is local, but the actual saying should be all politics <laughs> is middle school, because that's all it's ever, that's all it is and all it's ever been. So, U.S. boycotted the... <laughs> Soviet Olympics in 1980 because of Cold War things, basically. Most ostens- most clearly, it was because of a Soviet inc- the Soviet incursion in Afghanistan in 1979. That's kind of what started the conversations of U.S. boycotting in 1980. War um, invasion, I, yes. We yeah. don't know anything about that here, yeah. This was no, the, the, yeah. Twenty five years later, the U.S. was like, right. so invading Afghanistan. Huh? Hard to go for you guys. We're gonna try. Go. It. Um, yeah. One thing that was interesting to me, and just kind of rereading about the Olympic boycott in 1980 when the U.S. boycotted the Moscow Olympics, was um, a March 1980 poll by the AP and NBC which was just after the U.S. had announced they were boycotting the Olympics, that had 65% of Americans supporting the boycott, which I thought was really interesting because all I had ever heard, maybe just from a specific gymnastics or specific sports perspective, was everyone hated this boycott. It was horrible. It was so unfair. It was so terrible. Like, that's all I've ever heard. Like, it was horrible for Jimmy Carter. Everyone hated it. It was awful. So it was interesting to read these, like, at the time of the announcement articles that were giving pretty overwhelming support for the boycott from the American people, contrasted to many European countries that were like, we feel like the U.S. is kind of forcing us to do this because we're allies and we're not super sure about this. Yep. Which, and then, like, Great Britain ended up sending athletes to the 1980 Olympics, but not as a nation. They competed under the Olympic rings flag. Yes. I didn't know how far back that, like, send people, but just don't compete for your country thing Mm -hmm. goes. Um, Speaking of which, so I want to talk about the, so basically, uh, in 1980, the Moscow Olympics, we boycotted as you're talking about, because of the mm-hmm. invasion of Afghanistan. And I want to talk about the men for a second, because the men were a force in the, the US 1980s. Men. The U.S. Yeah. men. So the mm-hmm. U.S. men's absence actually had an effect and changed things. Specifically, I mean, ostensibly could have. Like, Kurt Thomas. I mean, you may have heard of Kurt Thomas. We have a whole episode about him. A uh, star of Jim Cotta, the greatest action movie starring a palm horse in the middle of a town made for... Um, <laughs> made for prisoners then any like he established that you could win you know a town war with a pommel horse and no other weapons um he was also like you know won six medals at a 1979 world like this you the simone before Second, simone secondary US. accomplishment yeah secondary to one. yeah being a pommel horse weapon leader and then bart Com- connor also was a legit uh threat mm-hmm. um parallel bars so like the did did the boycott change expectations for the medals for women? Uh, yes, less. 
but less than it did for the men. Um, because it, we all, yeah, in nineteen, especially bars, I say for the women would have been a big, a big threat. And the and they did talk about how much uh, the you know all that whole team how like some of that was just like it was destroyed and it was over for them, and the other ones were like, can I make it four more years to L.A.? And some did. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, uh, I think uh, the Soviet Union, Romania, East Germany, and Czechoslovakia are all at the 80 uh, Moscow Olympics and, you know, they're a force. So Mm -hmm. the LA 84 Olympics happen. Yes. So they go ahead without a bunch of countries. I think there was like Mm -hmm. 65 countries who didn't uh, partake in it. So um, most significantly for gymnastics purposes, though, the Soviet Mm -hmm. Union was like, you boycotted us. We're going to boycott you. East Mm -hmm. Germany, Czechoslovakia, Bulgaria, and Hungary were all absent from 1984. Let me repeat that. The Soviet Union and East Germany, extremely important countries for women's gymnastics. So how did this affect the field at the 84 Olympics in LA? So 50% of the medalists across men's and women's from the 1983 World Championships the year before were then not eligible for the 1984 Olympics. I actually kind of thought it was going to be more. It's a lot. That's a big part of the field. I thought it was going to be more, but Romania, a big chunk of the medals in women's gymnastics, China and Japan, a big chunk of the medals in men's gymnastics, they were all still there in 84. So it was about half of your expected medalists, roughly, were not eligible to compete it at uh, the 84 Olympics because their countries had boycotted. Also, Romania almost boycotted, which is part of this, which would have dramatically changed the women's gymnastics competition in 84 further because there was a meeting in Czechoslovakia with the intended boycotting countries and Juan Antonio Samaranch, who was the head of the IOC for like 9,000 years. So he met with them and was like, guys, what are we going to do about this? We uh, like, the, you know, one of those very IOC meetings where it's like gymnastics sports is a for is world peace and it oh, is a force a for good. And we all will be together. And we're not familiar with any of those same arguments like this year or anything. No. Never heard it. Um, so they're like, actually, no, all except for Romania, who was like, oh, yeah, great. We won't boycott. That's fine. They go to the meeting and they're like, we're not going to boycott. And all the other countries were like, actually, we are. It was like the, it was like they told Romania, like, everyone's going to wear like a silly hat. And then Romania showed up and was the only country wearing a silly hat. And all the other countries were like, hee, 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 we told Romania. <laughs> um, so Romania decides they're attending the 1984 Olympics. None of the other countries are, uh, they're all going to boycott. They decide to organize their own games, which we will get to in a second. Yes. So... Uh, the Soviet Union, it was interesting reading like the Soviet news at the time about this translated, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were like the capitalist Ted Turner attend- decided to attend this meeting and establish his own capitalist version of the friendship games. So um, later on, he created the Goodwill Games. But first, before the Goodwill Games came the Soviet Union organizing the Alternative Olympics, or it has many names, the Alternative Olympics, the Alternative Games. The BBC called it the Iron Curtain Olympics, also called the Friendship Games. If you're a gym nerd, you call it Olomots. Um, It was the Alternative Olympics, the 1984 Friendship Games, held in Olomots, uh, Czechoslovakia. And uh, all the women's medals went to the Soviet Union, East Germany and Czechoslovakia. So yeah. Bulgaria, Hungary, Cuba, Poland, North Korea won men's medals, but on the women's side, it was very clear. And we'll get to why it was clear as we go through these routines. Now, yeah. you mentioned earlier that some of the athletes who were from, you know, countries who attended but didn't compete under their country's flag, very popular yeah. to this day, went. <laughs> yeah. What did they say Um, about this? Yeah, so they went to the 80 Olympics, and then there were others who went to these friendship games in 1984. There was a really interesting piece, like a retrospective that the BBC did on this, the time that British athletes went to the 1984 friendship games. And there were some track athletes from the UK that had really interesting takes on this, because their experience was basically like, they almost made the 84 Olympic team. Like they were the alternates or were close to or didn't quite have the qualifying standard in time. And so people were like, oh, well, you didn't make the 84 Olympic team, but you can go to this meet in Czechoslovakia. And they were like, oh, awesome. 
it's another competition opportunity. We're going to an event in Czechoslovakia. And then they get there and they're like, oh, this is a lot. I did not know what I was doing. And so that was really interesting that it was like from their perspective, so little about like the politics that they weren't even really aware of, which is very, you know, very athlete. You're focused on your sport. You're, you get a competition opportunity. And someone says like, oh, you can go to this meet in Czechoslovakia. You're like, okay, sure. Yay. International experience, international competition. Yeah, I'll do it. And great. then they get there and they're like, oh, like everyone's here. Like, <laughs> All the famouses, all the political Iron Curtain famouses are here. This is this is something. This is going on. We want to introduce you guys, in case you're not familiar with them, to the stars of the Friendship Games, Olamotes. Starting with the most important gymnast, you should have her name already tattooed on you somewhere, if you mm-hmm. love gymnastics. Mostapanova. Lower Olga back, Mostapanova. neck, preferably. Yes. Forehead cursive if you on care. The front of, for course, cursive on the front of the neck is, I think, the best place to tattoo Mastopanova. It is. I agree. How did she do? Win anything? Um, she won five gold medals, including the all-around. Um, basically, I mean, I would say, I'm, don't, I'm not going out on a limb and saying Mastopanova is the best gymnast who never got to compete in an Olympics, because yeah. she's also, like, one of the best gymnasts ever. Yeah. Everybody this is that. one of the most impressive Olympic performances, even though it wasn't the Olympics. If it had been, it's one of the most impressive and dominant performances. Like, you have Nadia 76, you have Mustapanova in 84, you have Simone 2016. Like, the, that's the level of domination we're talking about. Yes. And the other thing that I think we don't talk about a lot is that she scored a perfect 40 in the all-around competition a 10 on every single event, uh, which I I didn't even know this happened before. Like, I knew her gymnastics, but I didn't know she had gotten. And that's not all. She got three 10s in compulsory. She almost got a 40 on in compulsories, too. So, yeah, she's kind of amazing. And I, I'm like not, I mean, these were the days when you could do a little boop on your landing and still get a 10. I mean, it's oh, not. Yeah. <laughs> we're going to get there because some of these a, scores, you guys. <laughs> but the judging at the time, she got a perfect yeah. 40. And uh-huh. so the other thing is like to add insult to injury about her not being able to compete in the Olympics, even though she was the most dominant and most amazing gymnast of her day, is when she went on, first of all, um, she did the Anodi years before it was named after Anodi, but it wasn't submitted mm-hmm. as a new skill, so it didn't get named after her, even though she did it in a series, too, which is so freaking hard. I cannot emphasize how hard this is, you guys. Um, she also, she did get the full twisting handspring named after her at some point. I'm not sure if it's still in the code, but it's either you can jump full twist onto your hands or you can spring off your hands full twist out of it. Either way, they were like, it's a Mostaponova. That's what we'll give to you. But... um. She retired after she came back after the Friendship Games in 84 to the World Championships, and she qualified to all-around finals in 1985, but she got galieva would pre-Galieva, another pre. Another thing we should be calling a Mastopanova out all these years, should be calling an Anodi a Mastopanova, should be calling getting Galieva to Mastopanova. Um, and they replaced her for Omelianchek, which is like, well, if you're going to get replaced for someone, you know... <laughs> million check so let's talk about east germany yeah star for the east german team was mexican elk two golds one silver two bronze Def- i mean she was the olympic bra- bars champion in 1980 so as far as what she was able to do this counts as defending her yeah. olympic title because she wasn't eligible to compete at the 84 olympics prior to this she had nine worlds and four olympic medals before 1984 so if these medals had counted she would be ninth on the all-time combined medal list shout out to the gymter.net who has you know the whole list of all of these which we use all the time and it's very helpful um that would put her ahead of athletes like nelly kim simone Amenar, daniela silva shannon miller svetlana boginsky like she would be ahead of all of them on the all-time medal list if the these medals counted as part of your total and there was an interview with her in 2018, I think, with Jim Novosti had up and translated, and they, you know, asked her about how the sport has changed over the years. And she talked about how she couldn't adapt to the wider set of bars, because bars was really her thing, defending Olympic champion. Um, and she couldn't adapt after wrapping was gone and the bars got wider, so she kind of gave up. She was like, forget this. Um 
but she is still coached for years all over the world. Um, I think she lives in Switzerland now or did recently. And then she wished that the floor boundary had expanded like the bars expanded. She was like, I was constantly going out of bounds. If they made the, the bars wider apart, why couldn't they extend the floor wider? So I feel personally attacked for her that um, I, I'm offended on her behalf that they did not make the boundary wider. Um, she also talked about the general forgiveness of the equipment now versus then and how everything is so springy and forgiving. And I mean, when you watch these landings at Olomotes, I mean, it's the same at an 84, but my God. You, you know feel what? the reverberation through like the yeah. bones of the leg. You're like, it's like a cartoon when someone is like, gets hit with an anvil and they're like, like that's every landing basically. <laughs> All right, let's talk about Rechna. Yeah, Hanna Rechna of Czechoslovakia, originator of the Stalder Tkachev on bars, which she competed at this, this very event, won two silvers and a bronze, um, the most decorated, like she was the star of the Czech team, the most decorated for Czechoslovakia. Yep. She, I mean, that skill is still so hard. And you might see people say Rikna, which I've said for years too, but it's Rikna. And that comes in handy when you're watching these videos, which this is a watch along. If you guys want to watch, uh, you you know, we put these up on YouTube now so you can watch along with us. Um, but yeah, it's a Rikna. But I was watching the videos and I was like, who is this gymnast? There's no lower third. There's nothing. Um, but you have to listen closely and they say the name of each gymnast, but you have to know how they're pronouncing it and know how to say it correctly. So um, she moved to the U.S. after Czechoslovakia split and became two separate countries. She owns a gym now and her son was an elite gymnast and an Olympian mm -hmm. and competed for the Czech Republic in the Olympics. So that's cool. And her daughter is on the Stanford team now. Yeah. So um, I love that. Uh, but back to Ted Turner and his capitalism. <laughs> yeah. What did uh, what did Russia learn from from this whole experience, or the Soviet Union and the future Russians learn from this whole experience? And what's happening uh, now since they are not allowed to compete yeah. in the Olympics? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. history is a circle. That's yeah. what we learned because this year Russia has proposed a friendship games bum ba 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 for the fall of twenty twenty four. Ted Turner came up with those goodwill well, go games, friendship games, and now Russia's like, oh, we're going to do it. And we're going to have our did it own. first. Yeah. Russia invented it. Ted Turner, you didn't do anything. So as we move forward in this competition, we in this competition, it is a competition, basically. You guys, we're going yeah. to go event by event and discuss the routines. But before that, I want to know from you, um, yeah. do the medals of the 84 Olympics have an asterisk because literally half of the best athletes weren't there. Tell me. No. You compete against who is there. You compete against who you're competing against and you have to win the competition in the moment of with who is there. It doesn't matter if that team was all underage. You know, that doesn't have an asterisk or not, as far as I'm concerned, unless, you know, medals get stripped. Um, that would be like, saying, you know, does Suni's Olympic all-around gold have an asterisk because Simone had the twisties? No. Simone wasn't there to in the all-around final. So, no. The best athlete wasn't there because of circumstances just like this. So, no. Speaking of... What do you think? Unless their medals get stripped because of their ages. I mean, many of these uh, gymnasts that competed at the Friendship Games, like many athletes who compete in those days have said that they have different birthdays than they competed under have, were they ever punished? No, not the athletes. Cause it wasn't their fault, but you know, was their federation ever punished punished the people retroactively? No, because that's only happened to, um, Asian China countries, as far Korea. as we can tell China, and North Korea. Um, and there is a statute of limitations 10 years, but I don't care about that. I would like them to go back in time and cross out the medals, even though I don't cause Mostova was the best. But anyway, I am going to present a different side of that argument. Okay. And okay. to me, uh, even though there was some abominable judging at both meets, shocking. Oh, yeah. Wow. <laughs> um, <laughs> as Kathy Johnson said when she did her interview with us, and we'll link to that in the show notes so you guys can listen to it if you haven't already. Um, everyone always complained about the Soviets winning everything and how it wasn't fair and blah, blah, blah. And then she actually competed with them in person was like, they are that much better than everyone else. No wonder they win everything. It's not cheating. They're look at them. 
So I would say, yes, there is an asterisk in terms of this. Was this the all the best athletes competing in an Olympics? No, it was not. So to me, if there's a boycott, there's a little, there's an asterisk. It's not like being injured and you can't do it like Simone and Suni. Do you think there is an asterisk on the 1980 Olympics then? Oh, yeah, totally. Okay. So if any country is boycotting. Bars. For women, bars specifically, because Roethlisberger wasn't there. So then is there going to, uh, theoretically, going to be an asterisk on the gymnastics competition at the 2024 Paris Olympics if well, we know that Russia can't qualify a team at this point unless something happens. Yeah. So if Russia's not there competing as a team, is there an asterisk on, say, the U.S. women win team gold in 2024? Was there an asterisk because the defending team gold medalists were not present? If Simone and Gabby Douglas are both on that team in Paris, no asterisk. How is that a standard? <laughs> I'm just saying, no one could beat them. It doesn't matter. Like, if they're on the team, that's it. And Suni is there, too. And Jade. And Shailise. I, You know, there's 17 people on my team. And Connor. <laughs> and No. Like, and, and Jordan Childs. Like, no. No one else. No one can beat them. So there isn't. But. For the sake I of. Think. In mm. in general, yes, there is. If it's a boycott year in general, yes. But. It depends on the athletes. I feel like you could come up with a reason why every single Olympic competition should have an asterisk. Was there a, a p political reasons, doping reasons, underage reasons? So you're saying I'm like Horkina now. Is that what you're saying? The Sydney Olympics does for sure have an asterisk. Not my words. I ne those words never came out of my mouth. Those are your words. And if you would like to go with them, then fine. All right. Fine. Um, so you're all right. Well, anyway, debate amongst yourselves. Get back to us. Uh -huh. We can discuss uh -huh. this on behind the scenes. I'm sure there will be some thoughts and I'm sure we'll have some follow ups. We'll do another follow up in 40 years and do this whole episode again and see what we yeah. said and if our predictions were right. And I was like, see, the most dominant Olympic team ever, the U.S. Paris <laughs> they'll dig Olympic up, they'll team. They'll dig up our graves. They'll prop up a couple skeletons. We're going to be and... alive in 40 years, aren't we? Speak for yourself. Oh, uh, the fact checkers have planned <laughs> for us to live to 128. The second this climate apocalypse gets too uncomfortable, oh, me too. I'm out of here. I'm yeah. checking out. Yeah. <laughs> if every day is going to be like the fire apocalypse, I'm done. Club Gym Nerd. You get discounts and first dibs on live show tickets, an extra whole podcast every week, athlete dossiers for major competitions, code guides, options to commission your own segments. It also makes a great gift. Check it out at gymcastic.com at the Join the Club tab. Before we continue, I would like to give you the history of how we have this amazing footage from Olomotes ah, and how... What if you're among your favorite topics, I think. It is! I love this story. It's the power of fans and why fans matter and how fans can change things and make the world better. Sometimes when they're not complaining about everything, they can get together and do wonderful things. So um, before the socials were around, you guys, in case you're a Gen whatever, Z, A? Yeah. Um, before the socials existed, there were the gymnastics message boards. And these are where you got all of your information. And there were some prominent ones. But the most important one was GGMB. This is the board that had all the info, everything. It was like you would get the real behind the scenes stories from gymnasts or coaches themselves that would be on there. Um, you would have people would go and post videos because USA Gymnastics would take everything down. It, someone literally went to a meet in Japan, filmed the juniors and put it up and USAG had it taken down. No one was there to film it. Like, why were they hiding the routines of the jun juniors who traveled abroad and competed? Um, so you would secretly like trade tapes or there was like secret ways to like, you know, watch things on there. It was the best. Also, USA Gymnastics was always on there spying on the gossip 
and coming in with like 1500 different usernames to try to keep what they would get banned and then they would try to get back on <laughs> oh it's like oh the, and i wish you guys could still see some of the things it was also like you know embarrassingly horrible the things that went on on there too but there was just like anywhere in the world but you know there were some great things uh that happened there too and really interesting posts but you can't see it anymore because it no, no longer exists in the format that it was at the time so um before, so anyway, people started talking about this friendship games, all mm -hmm. and why most part of one have she's the greatest of all time. Why can't we watch this? And you know, Mary the Renton couldn't do a split and blah blah blah. And then, um, which by the way, I <laughs> that's did... a really good summary of GGMB, I think. <laughs> most part of the greatest gymnast of all time, Mary Lou can't do a star jump pose <laughs> <laughs> with a gift. Um, also, um I did see in researching this episode uh, some a 1984 fluff that I didn't remember of Marta sporting her bangs and blonde ponytail before she had the short hair, uh, holding Mary Lou in oversplits next to Julianne McNamara. And I was like, Mary Lou Breton can do oversplits? Oh my God. And then Mary Lou fell into a lump on the ground and moaned after they were done. And I was like, okay, that sounds more and like this it. this was like, yep, that sounds like the coaching I know <laughs> from 1984. So anywho, back to GGMB. So people started talking about this, arguing about it. And there was a bunch of like academics and librarians and people on there. And they got together and someone reached into the archives of back in the day newsreels and found the Olomotes footage and got it and put it up. And I wish I remember the name of the person that actually did that and found it. But because this happened and it was on GGMB, like word spread far and wide and gymnasts who competed at that competition who had never seen themselves compete now could watch themselves. And some came on and said, thank you so much for finding this. I've never seen myself compete. I've never seen this footage. I can show it to my kids now. I can show it to my family. Um, it is just like one of my favorite, it's most wonderful, heartwarming stories of what people can do. And yes, thank you, GGMB, for all of our education and the wonders of Olomotes, which we will now discuss. But first, a disclaimer, a very important disclaimer, Spencer. My disclaimer is that we're going to compare 1984 Olympics with 1984 Friendship Games. Or at least that was the intent. Not everything from the Friendship Games in Olomots survives or we know what part of the competition it was from. I think a lot of it is from team and all around, not necessarily event finals. So when we're comparing, it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one comparison in terms of well, she stepped on that dismount and she didn't step on that dismount. I think the interest of our comparison is more of a qu overall quality of gymnastics, style and technique. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's like who the best gymnast. Like, is this where's the highest quality gymnastics being done? We can't compare. Uh, as you know, you can't compare meat to meat unless you decide to. And put it I mean, unless you're literally it. watching two meets <laughs> next to each other and you have the same routine from the same competition and the same phase of the competition, you could say, oh, this looks like a egret in a windstorm and this looks like gymnastics. So the gymnastics should win. You could do that. I've done I do it a lot. So when we talk about each event, we're going to give you the event winners, but know that we're comparing them generally their routines that they performed at these meets, mm -hmm. not routine mm -hmm. routine. So let's start with Vault, which was the uh, first, we'll give you the Friendship Games winners, um, Mostapanova and Yurchenko won Vault, obviously, and then Zabo <laughs> from Romania won in LA. So Spencer, your yeah. thoughts, Vaults. Comparing Vault side by side, I think my overwhelming impression is that it's in 1984, the Soviets had already learned what everyone else would later and forever learn, which is Yurchenko vaulting is where it's at. Because the level of vaulting from the Yurchen in the Yurchenko vaults that the Soviets were doing in terms of their amplitude, in terms of their laid out body position, were easily superior. I mean, I say lay out body position and then we look at a video of like a two, a vault that should get a two in general. <laughs> The layout, but if you're watching along with us, that video is not what I'm talking about when I'm talking about beautiful form. We'll get to those. We'll get to those we'll in a minute. We'll get to the beautiful ones later. I'm like, it, the vault was so beautiful. And then we see like tucked pike layout knee, whatever. Um, anyway. 
Soviet Yurchenko's beautiful form. And I think they use well, like Shishinova's we can watch her one and a half. Yeah. Which one is... and a half. Yeah, it's beautiful. I think you see and Shushanova with l- ponytail. I was like, yes. this is revelation. <laughs> I don't I didn't recognize you at first. Um, I think we see why um Yurchenko vaulting became like such a dominant force in women's gymnastics in this comparison because all of the souk and handspring vaults are you know there's tucked and people are trying to get into tuck position and there are flex feet and there are leg separations and there's chest position on landing compared to these extremely clean laid out yurchenko vaults and it's just such a huge difference yeah and i i think like the one thing about shishinova that i think is so interesting is that like she her technique is totally different because this is a vaulting horse not the table and you had to do it differently but also like she pulls the second half of her full it's super high first of all but she pulls the second half around so late and i'm just like shishinova was doing this how long ago was this 40 years ago is that how long 84 was 40 years Mm -hmm. ago and like this is still being used like the one and a half it was used to win the olympics in 2008 i mean it is. It was used to win the Olympics in two. Oh, the all around. All around. I thought around. you meant the, uh, Not the, you vault, meant the vault final. final. And I'm like, no, all around. Are you serious? Yeah. Nastia. Yeah. I mean, like they. There was. There, there's so much innovation that happened here, and it was done so well and with really solid form, despite the limitations of even the board back then. Like, was it was not as bouncy as it is now. Um. So. Yeah. Uh, I in defense yeah. of. Like, on the 1984 Olympic side, I will say that outside of the Soviet Yurchenko technique, I think Mary Lou's Souk Full holds up against mm-hmm. all of the other vaults. Like, this is, the for me, the next best vault. Like, she did, yeah. the Souk Full was her second vault, usually, in, um, when she was doing two, she would do the handspring pike half, which had more, which was more similar to most of the other people vaulting in terms of body position. You know, there are some things. Yeah, like she, I didn't realize, like I was listening to the commentary on this and I was like, wait, it's not a deduction to come onto the horse for a handspring with your knees bent, but they're all doing it that way. What was it? What was a deduction in 1984, though? <laughs> <laughs> it's not a deduction to like fall, apparently. So what is a deduction? Yeah, I, I agree with you, though, that Mary Lou Retton's souk full was really beautifully done. It was really, really, really well done. Absolutely one of the best faults, period, in the world, hands down. Now, do we want to talk about comedy or corruption? <laughs> Can it be reach, both? Comedy or corruption is the answer to both? Yeah. <laughs> I was watching the videos and I had to text this one to Jessica and just be like, so let's talk about this getting it done. <laughs> <laughs> if we're playing the like, oh, Olamots was so amazing and everyone was so much better, like, let's talk about this while you're scoring it down. If Reachna's, um, if, if Reach, okay, if Nastia's 2008 bar dismount was a vault, the Reachna, this is Reachna's, uh, souk full with legs apart and bent and flexed feet and landing short like not land. i mean she like uh, she has a little hop but like it is uh not pretty <laughs> it is very not pretty and she got a 10 like i <laughs> it's so it's such com- ridiculous comedy i can't even with this vault mm-hmm, so i'm like mm-hmm. if we really had videos of every single routine that was done at this meet what would we actually find? And I intend to go to Czechoslovakia and find it, let me tell you, someday. I would like to do a full tour. Jessica's going to travel back in time 30 years to the nation of <laughs> Czechoslovakia and find... I'm going to go to Czech Republic. I will also visit Slovakia. And um, I, they are, you know, Olomot's known for its pastel-colored roofs. Hmm. We're getting all of Jessica's tourism guide. Is some people say on fire today. <laughs> some people say skip Prague, go to Olomouc. I'm not doing that. I'm going to Prague. But anyway, <laughs> so that's our corrupt our comedy. Both. Yeah. Okay. So the verdict on Olomouc versus LA Olympics. Who should have won? Yeah. Vault? Well, the Soviets win the day for Olomots. They lifted the competition on their back and carried it for me to a victory here because of their Yurchenkos compared to 
vault champion from 1984, Zabo, whose vault one of our behind the scenes listeners this week called, uh, what they say, a, p- a pike in straddle. <laughs> Right, which I'm like, it's not that bad. I mean, um, she does this like this angle is not representative. Okay, it is, her legs are there is a separated full, and quite apart. a straddle. Yeah, I I mean, Retton's vaults up until the vault final, I say are superior, but I would actually tie. Um, okay. I would tie. Not well, Zabo's form is just a like her leg, she's cowboy legs apart, like flex feet every single vault. So I would say Retton, but Retton didn't do her best vaults in the um event right. final, she did not win event final gold and didn't want to win final. But I feel like all the rest of her vaults were right there with Mostapanova. Retton's were with Mostapanova mm-hmm. and the Soviets. I would say she was as good, had just as good form, even better landing positions. I would say. Um, but in terms of the actual winner, yeah, I'm giving it to Mostapanova and Yurchenko. Especially okay. Yurchenko doing one and a half. I mean, D score wise and form wise, she should be the period winner. Period. And then it's the winner you know, period. Like the, the period kids, winner is something. Not a, I don't know how to for, do that's the for difference. behind the scenes uh, conversation. <laughs> I don't know how to do the difference between like a period exclamation point and the the motion with your hands for chop off your head because they're very close do you know what i mean how the kids I do, do not period I do not okay we'll have a discussion on behind the scenes about that okay all right because i so, have no idea what's happening right now vault goes to olamotes next up we'll be right back after this The 2023 SHIF Symposium, a three-day virtual gymnastics education event, starts Friday, June 23rd through Sunday, June 25th with 30 lectures, 30 speakers, including keynote by Ellie Black and her coach Dave, which is like, I want to hear everything. Like, how do you do it? How do you, like, how do longevity? How does all your weight training work into it? Nick Ruddock, Scott Wilgris, Carol Angela Orchard. Uh, Queen of the Beam, Luke Carson, Dr. Ellen Casey, Dave Tilly, and more participants. You will save money from travel expenses while learning from the best coaches around and the best gymnastics training information because it's virtual. Um, you get lifetime access to all the lectures, recording handouts, and the Q&A sessions, which is really helpful, I think. Uh, topics include vault, bars, beam, floor, pommel horse, as well as overcoming mental blocks, building high-performance cultures safely, injury rehab, conditioning, and strength programs. So... A one, two, and three day ticket options are available and up to $150 off for bundles, as well as 10% extra off groups of five participants and more. So buy it for your whole entire gym. So check out shiftmovementscience.com. Don't miss it. Jessica, I need to be honest for a minute right now. Please, if, finally. If our listeners truly care about me, they would be Club Gym Nerd members. It's true. Because that is that is the truth. We have a lot of meets coming up, and the people, the members, the support is the really all the only reason we can do that. The only reason we can go to meets. Pretty, <laughs> pretty much, much. That's it. Much, that's it guys. at this point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it is very important that uh, if you love our shows or just looking at our faces, be a Club Gym Nerd member. So, and most importantly, we are giving away a, we are raffling, are we calling it a raffle? We're raffling away a commission episode or just, it's a giveaway. It's a giveaway. It's a raffle. You would have to buy a ticket. So this right. is just, this is it's just a, a random giveaway. selection All from members. The random selection among the club gym nerd members. We are giving away a commission to a club gym nerd member selected at random. So make sure you're. Club Gym Nerd subscription is up to date so that you are eligible to be selected to come up with a commissioned episode, anything you want in the world of gymnastics, your dream idea. We will talk about it. Yep. You can make us watch that Keanu Reeves movie about gymnastics. Oh, you didn't know that existed? Oh, yes. We can do that for you. So uh, make sure your Club Gym Nerd membership is active. And don't forget, we also have a store. A bunch of people discovered our summer stuff because there's different categories and albums you can look at in the store. And if you also want to support us 
it's not as much as, you know, unless you buy a lot of stuff, buy it for your whole summer camp from the store. Um, but please become a Club Gymner member so that we can give you a whole entire commission. And remember, Club Gymner members every Friday, in addition to early access and discount to live show tickets, which we have a live show coming up at championships this summer. Um, remember that you get an extra whole podcast every week behind the scenes, Fridays at noon. But this week, it is going to be Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific. So we'll see you there. Thank you for all your support, you guys. And we're back. Lars winners. Yeah. Olomotes, Gnau, and then LA was Ma and McNamara winning bars. Yeah. So Spencer. Lots of ties. Lots of ties. I, this is my <sighs> favorite part about these. I was like, there are so <sighs> many ties the way it should be. I think bars is the event where the Olympic champions hold up the best compared to the friendship games champions like i think bars is the best apparatus for like if the olympics were a team and this was a head-to-head dual meet like the olympics best apparatus would be bars like we have ma yan hong a a, co-olympic champion gold medalist who has the rov to beat the band risk originality virtuosity especially in that dismount which is still an F in the current code of points, by the way. It's still one of the most difficult dismounts. Her hip circle to belly back tuck fall, which is tremendous, and she stuck it in the final. Crazy freaking hard. Um, I also shout out to, this was the style at the time, but the leotard China wore the same, like Romania, with their emblem in the middle of their chest underneath the V like silky V of their V-neck leotards, making it look like they're already wearing a gold medal. Very smart. All the teams should do this. I don't know why this isn't more popular again. Um, But anyway, so I also love in her routine how she does that. She does a free hip on high bar, then wraps, then half turn, wraps the low bar, back hip circle, half turn to catch the high bar. It's just such Mm -hmm. a cool, it makes me, watching her makes me miss the innovation that came with the old school bars and wrapping the bars. There are so many cool combinations you could do seamlessly between it. And I just... And she stuck her dismount. Like, I just, yeah, it was, it's a beautiful, it's, this style is difficult and interesting on its own. And I l- really enjoyed watching it, even though I think they did an okay job with the new code. How about Julianne McNamara's gold tie? I love this routine. And I think the thing that, like, my overwhelming impression of rewatching the 1984 Olympics is, like, I don't, we, I don't talk about Julianne McNamara enough. This beautiful gymnastics, especially on bars and floor. I'm like, she is every bit the equal of her counterparts on the Soviet team on those routines. And it's really impressive to watch, especially through her speed in this routine, her rhythm, and her toe position on all of her wonderful stalters. I'm like, put it in a museum. Perfect. <laughs> I feel like I what I really liked about this routine is she starts with, you know how men sometimes start high bar by doing that, like, men, they do, like, a jump to mix grip, and they do, like, an uprise. It's like an uprise where they're like, oh, I'm going to do a giant out of nothing, but then, like, fakie and go back down mm-hmm. around the bar the other direction. I love that she starts with that. Um, yeah, it just stood out to me. And she is, like, a she does power bars with good knee and toe form which uh, is a beautiful thing. <laughs> it's so rare. It's so rare. And so compared to like Maxi Gnauk, what what are your thoughts there? If we're doing so, gold medalist to gold medalist. I mean, Gnauk, I, I didn't really feel like she was that much better. It did. Her routine isn't the one that stood out to me, really. When I was watching the Friendship Games, I feel like mm. Richna, her routine was way ahead of its time, at least the one that we were able to see. Um, yeah. Like, way harder than McNamara's routine, I thought. Like, she does the half turn. Uh, she does her Richna, which is the Stalter uh-huh. Tkachev. Um, she does a half turn Jaeger. So she, like, swings an under grip and then does her Jaeger out of that swing. Um, she does a Komenich Salto, and then she does a piked Komenich dismount. Like, that is freaking hard yeah super i mean she her routine has so many release skills in it as opposed to wrapping skills it was like uh, ahead of its time and her routine i would have put her in the top category ahead of ganalk um it's just such a it and her form is great that's the other thing and she doesn't dead hang out of her releases so i'm like i'm a huge fan of her bars i'm like (laughs) blown away by her bars yeah I mean, she does step on her dismount. You know, she's short. 
out of that Pike Komenichi dismount, but it's such a cool dismount. She just opened too soon. And also, who cares? It's the 80s. They didn't count. <laughs> Nadia got a 10 with Steps a aren't step. real. Steps aren't Nadia, it's the 80s. Steps Nadia aren't real. got a yeah. 10 with a step. So, I, you know, <laughs> I'm fine with it. Yeah. The other thing I did want to mention, if we're talking about comparing the scores, comparing all-around champions, is in the team competition, team optionals at the Friendship Games, Mostapanova hits her foot on the bar. Just like um, Zabo does, except Mostapanova then hit the rest of the routine and Zabo ate the mat on her dismount. Um, and so Mostapanova did that for 975. So I think that does reinforce the ridiculous height of Zabo's 93 for a fall if Mostapanova is being lovely for Mostapanova and clipping the bar and doing the rest great for 975, Zabo really has to be nine ones for that routine and not nine three. And that is part of the score comparison between her and Mary Lou or her and Mostapanova. You have to take that into account. Yeah. Did anybody else stand out for you? Anybody else you want to mention? There was another one. Uh, Birgit Senf of East Germany did just a mount that I enjoyed seeing that she does a round off back tuck over the low bar that mount. And I'm like, where, where did we go? Where did we go wrong bars? Exactly. Where is this? Cool. I, mount. I, I want, I want the code to give that an E that's <sighs> not out, make it countable, make it high enough difficulty that someone would want to do it and make it count. And I want to see this again, because this is so much better. I know why I hate that. And the bars, bars are farther apart now. Yes, yeah, so it's easier to do. Um, although it's, I feel like is the high bar is the low bar higher? No, I think it's the same height. Um, but I just feel like why? Where did we go wrong with like mounts on beam and mounts on bars are so boring now? Except shout out to everybody that's doing an actual flip onto the beam or some kind of leap onto the beam. You, beam, you know who getting you are. Better. It is getting better finally, but it went so boring for so long. I want it should be like a bang from the start of the routine. You know, remember mm-hmm. even like the jump off the floor full turn into a, like Onodi did this, I think. Jump off the floor full turn into a kip. Like just something like that. Panache style. Mm-hmm. You know, a little mm-hmm. ooh, what was that? That's how your be- your bar should start. So what we're burning- saying is even though there's not a deduction for starting your routine with a glide kip, we're deducting in our minds. <laughs> Our minds and souls are deducting like, for starting with a glide cap. Shout out to Hootie Garbagian for our, competing for Armenia, who brought a new mount to the world at the Rio Olympics with her jump over the low bar full turn into a uh, longhand kip. So, Hootie, thank you. All right, verdict bars. Olamodes versus LA Olympics. Who wins? I'm giving this is the I think this is the LA Olympics best event. I'm giving it to LA Olympics. Yeah, this is the one I agree with. If Reachna didn't win, then I would tie Reachna and Ma together. Oh my God, what are you not tying? You have both so tie. far. You have said actually, I maybe want to tie. They have different strengths, and it was like you know, <laughs> Reachna's ahead of her time. Like ah, uh, you know, but I'm gonna we'll we give need it that shirt in the gymnastics score team ties. <laughs> Can everyone tie? Question mark. Everybody did their best. It was so pretty. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. Next event we have is Beam. So in this final, we have Olga Mastapanova. End of end of conversation. Let's move on to floor. (laughs) (laughs) Done versus uh, Simona Pauka from Romania and Zabo. So let's just. Enjoy the magnificence of Mastapanova. What do you have to say about this routine? Um, that Olga Mastapanova got up on beam and said, everyone else can eat my farts. Don't even try. <laughs> Just, I'm done. I did it. I did beam. Yours sucks compared to mine. Get off the podium. It's done. That's, I- <laughs> that's my verdict about beam here. I feel like they had this. Me- I know it was like a multi-sport games with lots of other sports, but basically they held it just so she could do beam. Isn't that a fa- Isn't that in the history books? Yeah, yeah. I think I read. Well, the it. other ones were all in di- all kinds of different cities and countries. Like this was not a, a all hosted in one place. So this yeah. was Olamutz was for gymnastics, and it's just like yeah, I was for this routine. Yeah, the most important one. So she does press handstand pirouette in split, um, step turn, step down into a flip flop anodi perfection absolute perfection you can't do it any better than she did it like it's 
the style, the rhythm, her form, it's absolute perfection. She does a two foot back handspring to a layout. She does a late step out in that layout because style and she cares and like artistry. Oh, also she has a, a front aerial. She has a back scale that you could, she holds and you could basically put it in a jewelry bo box and play that like Clinica, you know that song? Clinica. Jewel the jewelry box song? <laughs> <laughs> no, the one that all everybody knows that's like the Russian folk oh. song, Clinica, oh, okay. yeah. um, which I forget how it goes now, but I listened to it over and over this morning so I could be like, oh, I'll sing it on the show, and now I can't remember. But you, if you pressure. heard it, you'd know it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, but basically that's how beautiful it is. Jewelry box, like even a pink jewelry box with a mirror inside of it. That's Whoa. the level. Yes. <laughs> Ballerinas rip them out of the box, throw them in the trash, put Mastapan of a scale in there. That's how I feel about it. Uh, yeah. I also, there were some other details. I mean, like, I feel like Soviet feet, arms, movement style details outshine yes. what, once again, outshined what anyone else is doing. But we also saw um, Reachna's leap execution was excellent on beam and really holds up. And then we had Barak Sanova, who was just there to be like, um, I invented Oksana Chusovitna just to be like, you know, that role that she played when she first came on the scene. Like I invented that in 1984. I'm just like, boom, difficulty, boom, tumbling. Got that. Got that. She's dismounting beam with a full in in 1984. 1984, you guys, how many full ins do we see off beam to this day? Not many. Cause it's so freaking hard. And this is what I mean when, when people are like, oh, this is like, this is amazing. Look what she's doing. And I'm just like, your mom did that in the seventies because <laughs> you're doing it in the seventies. If you're competing in the eighties, like I just, uh, like a three series, four series, five series, even on beam, all that was being done. It was all done. Like they're just so far ahead of their time. I just, Oh, Beam was so good. But I think what you're talking about, the quality of movement mm -hmm. is unmatched, except in at in LA at the Olympics, except maybe for Ma. Like mm, Ma's Beam, yeah. Ma from China, Ma Yanhong is so beautiful. She is yeah. also buttery smooth, like an eel that can do flips, is how I would describe <laughs> her beam. Yeah. What I really like about Ma Yan Hong's beam is, like, it, choreographically, there is a cohesive theme to her performance on beam, which we almost never see. Like, even some of the top beam workers who we love, like, the movement theme is just, like, pretty. Like, I'm gonna right. do, I'm gonna do pretty things, like, pretty hands, and it's lovely, and we love watching it, and I'm never gonna say no to it. But, like, you're doing just pretty. There is a, there are, move motifs that repeat in her court routine choreographically there's a discernible style of movement it's just like ah yes it's a thing it's possible and yeah. you don't have to it doesn't happen because of rules like must have three steps of side choreography and a lean or whatever gets put in the code to try to make things artistic it's because it's just this and that's what you're supposed to do and it's great this part where she does like lean forward, reach for me, like brings her arms around. Like this is the, oh, it's so beautiful. And it's just a dance sequence. How often now do you see someone just dance on beam? And it's beautiful and you remember it and want to repeat it in your living room. That's my question for you. Not to mention she, her dismount is nuts. You guys, it's <laughs> nuts. It's like everybody was talking to us last week. Cause we did an episode. We'll link it to it in the show notes about, um, Nellie Kim's, uh, basically your Chenko off the end of the beam vault. Yeah. Or like Souk off the end of the beam dismount. <laughs> the where free you free cartwheel <laughs> into her as part of, at the beginning of her dismount. Yeah. You just flip yourself off from a roundup. And let's done go, it. Wah! <laughs> you just blast <laughs> yourself off the beam is what it is. It's That's the one only of way to describe that dismount. You just go, ah! <laughs> You'd go to open gym and dare your friend to try it, and they'd land on their head in the pit, which you should never do, by the way. That's how I feel about that. But people do it in, like, dev, the levels regularly, hmm. but we never see it at Elite because it's insane. But um, 
I her okay, so back to Maya Hong. Her dismount is a freaking side cartwheel, not a cartwheel as we see it now, which is front to ending facing the other direction. It is the direction you came from. It's a side cartwheel. She takes off for her dismount in a plie facing the judges like, bitches, watch this shit. And then <laughs> sideways does a freaking full. That's her dismount. It's yeah. amazing. It's such a beautiful, unique, well done quality of movement theme in the choreography, which all of your choreography is supposed to tell a story. You should be a character on beam too. You can't just be elbows. <laughs> That's not. You can't just be <laughs> Romanian Now trains. someone's gonna That's write not. a book called Elbows with a lead character named Elbows, and it's like I am channeling Elbows <laughs> from Elbows. <laughs> it can't just be Romanian chicken flip of your boobs. You know what I mean? The ch- <laughs> you know when they do that isolation chest yes, isolation. You love talking no, about that Romanian I chest isolation. Hate it. So I would deduct. <laughs> Every time they, I would be like, once it's a dance move. The rest of the time, I'm taking a quarter tenth for every time you do an isolated chest. It's, well, it's a chest isolation where you do extension flexion of your chest for no reason. Because if the whole team does it, it's not the theme of your routine. (laughs) It's a tick that you've developed from your (laughs) abusive beam coach. And I want it to end right now. Oh, I can't stand that. We need to call that. We need a word for that. Um, how are we going to describe that? The Romanian uh, tick. The Romanian chest beam tick. All right. No, we need a better name for that. You guys on behind the scenes, we'll tell us. It. We're going to workshop it. We'll storyboard it. The thoracic tick of Romanian beam. Thoracic tick. <laughs> ah, this is terrifying. Go, ah, here I go. Oh, God, I hate that so much. Those poor gymnasts. Like... Anyway, um, so back to who uh, the other person that won, who we have not talked. I was seriously like, someone else won Beam? Who won Beam? <laughs> I never heard of her. I completely We're forgot not talking about her. Pal- Palka? Palka, and I feel so bad because like her difficulty is legit. Palka for Romania, who had to stop for 100 years before she did her back handspring layout layout, which was a deduction back in the day. Now I feel like they're trying to bring that back again. But, like, her difficulty is legit. Her form, eh, not so much. Definitely not up to the level of the Soviet gymnast or Ma. But um, she has really good difficulty. Um, she does uh, the back handspring two layouts, back handspring to two foot layout back in the day. Her dismount is a back walkover, back handspring, back handspring double full. She's like, I will use the entire beam. Thank you. I will tumble mm-hmm. all the way down it. And and she also has stuff like, you know, she does a nice turn. She does a nice handstand. All the things that I feel like you should have in a beam routine to show mastery of the sport. Not just, you know, you fulfill the perineum rule and step sideways for a little while and wiggle your butt and pretend like it's artistry. You need Talk to... Talk about needing a better name for things. I don't <laughs> need to hear you say perineum rule ever again. Oh my god, I was watching TV last night and there was some ad for, I don't even know what the product was, and it was like burning perineum. I'm like, what drug is this? If your perineum can burn, I don't want it. Keep it. I don't care what it is. It's the most horrible thing I've ever heard. Oh, anyway, because now they have to talk slowly in the drug ads so you can actually hear all the horrible things that could happen. Anywho, you guys, um... I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> so did we all. We're all broken now. It's over. Anyway, a lot of difficulty, but she doesn't have the form or the movement quality for me versus the friendship games. Olamutz for the win for me. What's your final verdict? Uh, Olga Mastapanova. That's my final verdict. <laughs> no one ever stood a chance. No one no. had a chance. No. She's just superior in every way. Every way. Like, there's nothing in her routine that isn't done absolutely perfectly. Nothing. From the dance, to the turns, to the skills, to the choreography, to, I mean, her dismount maybe, or double full, could be, like, a little bit better. But, like, dismounts didn't count back then, so. <laughs> so, and now, so now we have, so far. What happened keep- on the landing stayed on the landing. <laughs> yes. So, to, to let you know where we are so far in Olomouc yeah. versus LA Olympics. Vault. Yeah. Went to the Soviet Union. 
bars went to it went to the Olomutz games there were more people there than just the soviet team except it went to the soviet team it went to mostoponova and yurchenko yeah and it went to mary lorette and had she done a good job on her vault in but anyway uh mostoponova yurchenko uh bars went to ma yonhong so that one went to la beam now we are giving to mostoponova so mm-hmm. we are two for one now LA Olympics is losing. That's where we are. Okay, so now that we've established Mostoponova, greatest beam worker of all time, uh, let's talk about floor. Yes. This floor. one was won by Mostoponova and Maxi Gnauk from, Gnauk from uh, East Germany, and then Katarina Zabo from Romania <sighs> won on the oh spencer has feelings Mm -hmm. feelings about this at the la olympics so spencer please i want to talk about none of those winners i want to talk about people who didn't win because all of this wrong um except for olga masapanova because that's always right um i only want to talk about irina barksanova's floor from olamuts with her 985 that she got for this routine which was an underscore based on the standard of the scoring here from it's the criminal. team competition was ridic with the full ends. She was like, it's 1984. Everyone thinks you have to do a pike full in where your legs are in two different countries and your feet are in the river. No, you can actually do them wonderfully. And I'm going to do multiple of them. Like there's a straddle, like there's a straddle at the end of her pike full in, but it's like a normal straddle. It's, it's like so good. It's a small. It's like like a currently a small deduction. It's not like I'm pulling in and dying, and my chest is on the ground. She has a pike full in, and then if, the, her second pass, which is a back one and a half, beautiful step out. It's flighty and gorgeous step out through to a double, double back, which they were competing on concrete, so it's a little cowboy, <laughs> and she steps out of it. Da, 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 da. I won't have anyone talk badly about this routine. No. No. She steps out of that one and a half. Like, you know, in ballet, when like the dude ballerina lifts up the female ballerina and holds them and then lets them down. It is like that kind of like extension and gloriousness. And she's tumbling. You guys, if you don't start training your gymnast with ballet or something that has ballet foundation in it, um, then th- this watch this routine and we will understand. Also for injury prevention, the turnout. She ends with a tucked full in. She even had some break dancing in there. So she has almost perfectly standing up in her tuck full in. It was not an 80s tuck full in. Um, do you see her no, little that back was a, spin? That was a present day tuck full in. Yeah, it was ama- like Simone Biles level tuck full in. And she dismounted Seriously. with it. She dismounted. She finished with it. It's her second one. It's her last pass of the routine. Um, this routine. And then they you- were like 985, but also you could die and we're going to give you a 10. So th- that makes sense. <laughs> Even without the music, which is hauntingly beautiful. This one needs to go in our greatest choreography of all time with our French correspondent. Um, Even without the music, you are transported in this routine. That's how good her dance is. You can feel the music without hearing it because she is, as the great dance company of Travis Wall says, shaping sound. She is shaping the sound with her body. Uh, I wish they would come back. Are they done now? I loved shaping sound. Anyway, in this routine, you are transported to a magical forest where you are heartbroken and lost. But Mm. through her choreography, you can see that though you have created and are huddled by a stream, a puddle flowing from your tears, magic animals are coming to you and singing sure. to make yes. you feel better. Yes, yes, and it's yes. not, it's still, you know, kind of creepy and weird. Cause you're like, am I tripping? Am I so mm-hmm. grief stricken that the animals are talking to me? So it's dark, but you have a light of hope in this routine. It's so beautiful. It makes me want to cry. This routine. It is Brooklyn Moore's level. Whoa. Whoa. Without the music, without the music. And when you turn the music on, if you do not have emotions, you're dead inside. We already know that about you, Spencer, but the rest of you, mm-hmm. listen, mm-hmm. watch that routine and try not to have feelings. If you don't, you know, I would find a therapist immediately. <laughs> Jessica. <laughs> Jessica. This is why this is why you get letters. <laughs> this is why this is why. This is why you get Reddit threads. 
Jessica said I needed a therapist because I don't have the exact same emotional landscape as her. It's just true. It's not my fault. Uh, <clears throat> okay. So anyway. let's talk about Zabo versus that. Get out of here. No, no, I don't want to talk about that because watching these routines again from the 84 Olympics, I'm like, I, where was this? Why didn't I put this in the She Was Robbed episode? Because watching Zabo with that jank pike full in that's super short, and the tucked full in was super short, and the pike full in was just like all the shapes. And then Julianne McNamara doing a beautiful routine, and they both get a 10. They both get the same score in the floor Ugh. final. No, Julianne McNamara should be the Olympic uh, floor champion from 1984. Yeah. Unacceptable. Robbed. Robbed. McNamara did a great routine. Is it, is it, uh, Broxanova level. I'm routine? not saying that. Oh, I'm saying it was the best right. routine of the It was the, the best of LA. Lives. I agree. She did a great routine and really good landings. Um, but I mean, did she end with a full in? No. Oh, but yeah, I agree that McNamara was much better um, than Zabo. I mean, Zabo's good, but it's a different style of routine. But I just, I just feel like, oh my God. I mean, okay, Mastapanova and... Yeah, we no. haven't talked about Mastapanova's actual floor, which is the only right. one I've seen from the Friendship Games with the music. And it's like, I mean, we've talked... Everything we've said about Mastapanova so far, yes, that applies to her floor. It's yeah. perfection. Just no problem with that. So, the final verdict. Yeah, I mean... Floor. Olamutz just blow, blew the Olympics out of the water. Wiped the floor. Yeah. With yeah. The f- they yeah. it was they had to institute the mercy rule on beam and floor because it was such a blowout. They were like, we can't even fit. It's too. It's not fair to the children's emotional states. We have to stop this so that they don't feel too bad about themselves. We have to do a mercy rule. Some people just like to give us no strings attached money. They don't want to bother with joining Club Gym Nerd, and so they just donate. You can find our donate button for a no strings attached donation at the bottom of the club page at gymcastic.com forward slash club. Okay, so now the final tally is Olamut's Vault, LA Bars, Beam, we have. You're giving it away, fact checker. We're not done with the end yet. Oh my God. <sighs> Fact checkers, give it. We're not to. We haven't done the all around yet. You're too excited to show the thing. Oh, fact checker, way way ahead of the game. This part, he got too excited to show the winner. Um, okay, so beam. Uh, we have now Mastapanova. Obviously, duh. Everybody knew when they mm-hmm. saw, saw the name of this episode, they were like, "Oh, well, duh." <laughs> we should just call it Mastapanova. Um, and now we have floor going to the Olamuts too. Yes, yeah. the Olamuts. All right, the so Olamuts. last, the Olamuts. <laughs> okay, all around. So the winner yeah. uh, in Olamuts was Mastapanova, duh. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and then, obviously, the LA Games was Mary Loretton, with a great performance. Mary Loretton was fantastic in the all-around competition it, at the LA Olympics. A inspired performance. Mm-hmm. Spencer. But, I mean, come on. <laughs> That's the that's what my feeling about the all around. It's Mustapanova, no question. I think what's really interesting for me in watching these others is that once you take Mustapanova out of the equation, I don't think it's as obvious as my impre- my impression without just having ju- having just watched it would indicate. Like if I watch the routines we've seen from Richna in the all around final, and Richna won the silver metal all around at the friendship games when i watch those routines we talked about that 10 on vault on beam she has a huge huge leg up wobble yes, and a large lunge and gets, an, gets a 985 which also what who, who could possibly that performance is inferior to mary lou retton's olympic like the silver medal performance from olimuts is inferior to mary lou retton's olympic all around yes, performance agree but Looking down the list, like I, as I say this, I have no evidence of this. This uh, this is not an uh, this is not an assertion. This is just 
how things read to me is that the Reachna silver was maybe like uh we I need to make sure Czech the host country Czechoslovakia gets a medal in the all around and yeah. that that performance wasn't actually the second best and that you have like a Shushanova in there Maxi Ganauk tied Shushanova for bronze at Olomouc and that was with Maxi Ganauk missing on bars we don't have that routine but she got a 9-5 and she got a 10 for all of her other bars routines so I'm like probably she probably fell and got a 9-5 probably what happened there um and that dropped her to bronze um so I think that in ob- my verdict is Mostopanov over Redden, obviously but I think the uh al- Outside of Mustapanova, it's pretty. It's much closer than I would have expected. Yeah, I I say my final verdict is Mustapanova over Retin, but I mean like literally just boop over, like silver. I think I would give to Mary Lou. I think based I would. on the routines that we have seen, that we've would. seen. I feel like I haven't seen enough of like Shushanova's all around performances. Yeah versus her team competition routines to say either way. Yeah. And Baroxanova because whew, you know that I've named her basically Obama plus Anova on the end. Barack. Yeah, that's fine. That's it now. Yeah. Baroxanova. I like that name very much. I'll always remember it for the oh God. I'm she's one of my new favorites now. How did I miss her before? Where have I been? Yeah. I haven't have watched this with enough Oh, I know she- that was the other thing. I was like, I'm very familiar with most of Panova's routines from the 84 friendship games, but the rest of the competitors, I was not f- as familiar with as I should have been in claiming to be a gym nerd. Yeah. Like I thought Lashinova's floor was, well, it's still probably my favorite. Cause that floor sequence where she does like the split in a chest roll and the, it might still be, but um, Barash Nikova. Oh my God. It's so Barash. Sorry. Baroxanova. I made up a whole. I made up a ballerina. You just gave yourself a whole backstory. You gave yourself a whole mnemonic backstory, and then immediately forgot. <laughs> I have shame. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, I just. Oh, she is just so. Oh. That routine is haunting you guys. Like, if you're having a moment, if you're having like a Nola Matthews floor moment where you just need to be like depressed and sit on a roof for a little while, just put that, give yourself a minute. You know, you need to get some grief out, put that routine on and soak in the beauty of life despite your feelings. Just let get it out and then give yourself that 15 minutes, watch it on replay and then... You can go on with your day. I'm telling you, it will lift your spirits. It's so beautiful. Oh, so thank you again to like the gym nerds who found this meat and got it on the tubes of you for us. The YouTubes. <laughs> the YouTubes for us. Because ah, uh, I just okay, so floor. Oh, sorry, all around. Final verdict is yeah. Mastapanova. Sec silver retin? From what we've seen? Yeah, I'm okay. I'm okay. Yeah. I mean, we've had this conversation before where I was kind of like probably fourth or fifth Mary Lou Retton would be, and I'm I'm upgrading that. Yeah. We don't I don't know because we haven't seen enough for right. me to feel confident about that, but I'm upgrading her position comparing the two. If we have any listeners in the Olomot region or any listeners who want to make us trip to the archives to get all those routines, because they've got to have film of everything, right? back in the day or wherever mm-hmm. they whoever had the license the soviet union tv license moscow headquarters slovakian broadcast what we're watching okay well was it because <clears throat> it said it something about bratislava at the bottom of one of the frames this is why i said that oh yeah the well in the spelling too i guess maybe in those yeah but anyway you guys we need to see everything we need more that's what i'm saying <clears throat> I want to watch all these routines. All right. So now, fact checker, final 1984 verdict. We have, okay, vault is Olomutz. Bars, LA Olympics. Beam, Olomutz. Floor, Olomutz. All around, Olomutz. Superior competition (laughs) is Friendship Games, Olomutz. Yeah. Friendship game. So I think in general, overall, we reinforced our assumptions, but lessened them. I feel less yes. str- like that's my feeling. It's like it's not as strong or as dominant or as much of a blowout as I would have expected it to be, even though 
the final verdict is about what I would have expected it to be. Yeah, I felt more like it was going to be a blowout, too. I always felt like, ugh, Mary Lou can't do a split, and therefore, it's all an You were raised by GGMB. How could you think anything else? (laughs) It's so true. So many of us were. Um, So I, I do feel like it is... I just feel fulfilled by watching all of these routines over again and watching them back to back. It, it's like a, it was a very, uh, I feel more complete as a general gym good, nerd now. Good. Yeah, I do. I feel like my degree is like, I'm, I've moved up a level in my yeah. gym nerd degrees. Yeah. Um, and like, so what are your, like your closing thoughts to summarize? I think I just, that was basically my summary that, you know, the LA Olympics moved up a little bit closer than I thought. Um, My summary, I think our summary is Julianne McNamara and Irina Barksanova. Like, Mm. stop with this Mastopanova Retin business. We're we're post Mastopanova versus Retin. It's all about Barksanova and McNamara. Yeah. And Mayan Hong. And Mayan Hong. Yeah. And Richna. So good. Richna's bars years yeah. years ahead of her time i mean literally like 30 years ahead of her time she has two elements in that routine that are still ease right Mo- lots of the like doing bars in the team final uh have maybe two ease this year yeah, yeah. i uh it's such a great meet to watch and yeah watching them back to back you know one of these youtube people uh, should make a comparison routine for routine. If anyone's looking for something to do, you know, on a, a rainy Sunday afternoon, if you want to do that, uh, we would love to no, see it. Nothing, nothing hits like a 40 year old gymnastics competition. That's what the kids are into. Do my final question for you is if we started with this is like why these routines still matter, not just the difficulty in the series and how, you know, rare some of these still are to see because they're so difficult can the importance of the artistry and how Donatella Sacchi is trying to bring these back, how long will it take to bring it back considering we still have mostly eliminated a foundation of you do your four events and then you do ballet or some kind of dance foundation in American gyms for sure. This is rare to have the right training from the beginning. Not possible. I don't think you do in a, an open-ended code. And I don't think at this point, you know, you've crossed, you've crossed the line. You can't go back to a Tenno system. And in an era where it's what is most prized is the ability to impose some objectivity, more objectivity into the judging in order to avoid controversy, which there are, you know, benefits to that. And I think that is a huge emphasis. And there is the general... Uh, public perception of gymnastics judging is that it's more subjective than it actually is. It's quite a bit more objective than people think it is. And I think gymnastics wants to send the message. It actually is a lot more objective than you think it is. And these deductions are coming from a very specific place with very specific requirements. They're going that direction. And the more you go that direction, which again has its benefits, the less you, the more you're going away from routines like this. Well, now I'm heartbroken. Thanks a lot. What a heartwarming way to end. Well, I want to make a suggestion to this. And I don't know. I mentioned this on a a show a little while ago. And I don't don't think we didn't get any response to it, which makes me think people maybe don't know what this is. Maybe Fact Checker can bring up a video of this now. If you guys want to watch, we can put it in the show notes. Um, Dunham technique of dance so named after Catherine Dunham who is from I think she's from East St. Louis in the United States studied dance was a dancer all of her life and then then she went to the Caribbean I think she went to Haiti um, and then she created this Dunham technique which is a style of dance which builds on her foundation of ballet that's what you know she grew up learning ballet and then it melds it with the black Caribbean styles of dance and the religious dances of those, um, of those islands. And it is, so you start at the bar, like this is what you actually do. You start at the bar and you're doing your bar works. You have your foundation of ballet, but then you are working in the black culture and religious dances, which is a lot of like low to the ground, the kind of like hip hop foundation, like a different kind of dance. And it's so fun. Like it is, it's so fun to do. 
And you still get your lead from the elbows, posture, turnout, all the things that you get from a a foundation of ballet. Um, But I used to like, even though I have barely taken Dunham technique, just for fun, I would do it with the kids um, when I would do a ballet rotation with them. And it was so much more fun because it was totally different than stuff that they had done, a lot of kids. Um, And it made ballet less boring because, you know, if you're a gymnast, ballet is like, kill me right now. You just want to climb all over the bar. And if there's any... uh, there's any gyms out there who are looking for a way to make ballet fun, but also make sure you have the fundamentals and looking for something different, I would recommend Dunham Technique or something close to it. That's my recommendation. There, I fixed gymnastics. You're welcome, Donatella. Uh, now we can move on. All right, you guys, remember that behind the scenes is this Thursday at 11 Pacific. Join us live to ask questions. You can listen to it uh, on your favorite podcast player. Make sure that your membership is active so that you can be eligible for our random giveaway of a full commissioned episode on any topic that you want. Thank you guys so much for supporting us. We could not do this without you. Thanks once again to GGMB and whoever it was back in the day that found the old Olamut's footage and made it available to the public so we can enjoy it, so the gym nerds can enjoy it, so the actual gymnasts can watch their footage. We salute you for your service to the gym internet, and uh, we will see you guys on Thursday at 11 a.m. Pacific. And thank you so much for supporting us. Thank you for listening. Remember to take off on gay, split on right. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on Thursday. This show is created, executive produced, produced, edited, audio engineered, and published by me, Jess Coburn. Managing editor in charge of show notes, podcast content, and wrangling over enthusiasm is Spencer Barnes. Our news editor is Uncle Tim of gymnasticshistory.com. And customer service IT, Gymternet News, and additional production services are provided by Steve Cooper, aka Fact Check. <laughs>